He's Chase Sr. I'm Harrison Graham. It's Any Given Thursday by Chat Sports. So let's get into the latest around the Dallas Mavericks, Chase. First game without Luka Doncic, who we'll get to in a minute uh, with his injury updates, is in the books. Uh, a close one. Dallas outplayed Phoenix for quite a while. But, Chase, if you were unaware, and I'm sure you follow these trends in sports all the time, there's certain matchups that just don't make sense. Dallas against Phoenix, whether they're good or bad, obviously they're good now, they can't beat them. They've lost seven in a row, and I want to say like 11 of 12. They lose 105 to 98 in a game, honestly, they probably should have won last night. Well, and the Phoenix Suns, let's not take anything away from them. They've arguably been the hottest team in the NBA Ten with all of those Robert Sarver allegations hovering around that franchise. I think they've been able to handle it well, but yeah, it really doesn't make sense. You're watching this game, and you're like, okay, without Luka Doncic, everything's going through Chris Stapps, Porzingis, Jalen Brunson playing really well. They have an opportunity to steal this game. Tim Hardaway was doing Tim Hardaway things, but then really in the fourth quarter, the game started to shift and down the stretch, they really just choked this ball game away, giving up bad defensive lapses, yeah. offensively taking bad shots. It is one of those matchups that doesn't make a lot of sense. You're like, they match up pretty well, they were playing well, and then that game just really went down the toilet. I, I don't know how to explain it. Dallas can't beat Fe Phoenix. I don't know why. I mean, Phoenix didn't make the playoffs for 11 years, and the Mavs had a well below 500 record stretch against Phoenix in that time. It, there's no way to explain it. Uh, Jason Kidd went to a couple of weird X and O's things last night. He goes through this weird zone with a four-point lead, and uh, Phoenix cooks him for a couple of threes to take the lead. Uh, we saw Reggie Bullock missed a critical layup late in that game where he tried to go super acrobatic, and he should have just laid it in or dunked it. He is 6'6", after all. But there certainly were some positives, but – I told you guys this last night, and you guys meaning Chase and some of the other chat sports office members, when you have a chance to steal a game in a game you're not supposed to win in any sport, and let's be clear, Phoenix on the road without Luka is not a game you should win, but when that game is there to win, you got to find a way because you know you're going to lose a couple that you shouldn't lose. That was a missed opportunity last yeah, night. Yeah, and they let this one slip away. There's really no other way to put it. I do, though, like Harrison – how the defense has been playing under Jason yes. Kidd. I like how Chris Stapps Porzingis, after a little bit of a slow start, he also dealt with that injury, how he's kind of come around a little bit and how Jason Kidd is using him as more of a focal point offensively. That was even with Luka Doncic on the floor. So you lose this game and the losing streak to Phoenix is certainly maddening, but I think you can find some positives in the developments that you've seen over the last week or two. What is your guys' frustration level after this loss to the Suns? Scale it 1 to 10. At the end of the day, 6 or 7, I mean, it's not like it's a bad loss. I mean, it's a, it's a loss against a championship contender on the road, but now you got to play them again uh, uh, on Friday night. Yeah. Let's, let's be real. You're probably going to lose that game. Luka Doncic, doubtful. We'll talk more about him in just a moment. So scale it 1 to 10, 1 being not frustrated at all, 10 being very frustrated. Six or seven, uh, had they lost normally, I'd say like two or three, who cares? But the fact that they had a chance to win that game and didn't is a little bit frustrating. What's not frustrating is deals. We got one for you. Get this sweet Dallas Mavericks quarter zip jacket for 40% off. Usually it's $59.99. Right now it's $35.99. It's a hell, hell of a deal. We'll have the link down in the comments and in the description as well. Chatsports.com slash Mavzip. That is chatsports.com slash Mavzip. Get this Mavs quarter zip uh, jacket right now while it's on sale for 40% off. The holidays are here. It's a perfect present for your loved ones. Tons of sizes available as well. One more time, that is chatsports.com slash Mavzip. Okay, let's get into the latest around Luka Doncic. Uh, just a few minutes before we went live on any given Thursday, uh, he uh, was officially listed for doubtful for Friday night. Not surprising. Has a minor ankle and knee sprain. Uh, did avoid structural damage when they went through the MRI and the X-ray, so that's a good sign. Kind of in that day-to-day, -day, maybe week-to-week -week realm at this point in time. Did work out on Thursday. Was uh, interacting uh, in shoot-around. Got some shot ups, shots up on Wednesday night. Uh, so he's moving around. That's a good sign. Uh, we'll see. They've got three more games on this road trip. Uh, Phoenix and then two against the Clippers. We'll kind of look at the schedule coming up soon, Chase. But this could have been worse. There's no doubt about it. Oh, it could have been much worse. Luka Doncic is a top five player in the NBA, and his numbers are down this year but the numbers are still out the roof. The averages are really just insane. He's averaging almost 25 points per game, more than eight boards, a little less than eight dimes, and shooting 43%. I think that figure is going to climb 
over time, maybe to 46, 47%. Yeah. But you'll lose Luka Doncic for any period of time. If it's a long time, that could prove to be disastrous because he really is everything with this Mavericks team. Yeah, I mean, he makes this team go. The offense, he's gotten better as a defender every single year. He's improved as a vocal leader. Uh, that's something he talked about after getting that Supermax deal is – I'm, he, he said, look, I'm a great player, but now i got to be an even better leader for this team, and he's done that uh, throughout training camp and on into the season. I think uh, he probably uh, was a big reason why that uh, him and KP got back on the same page because uh, there was some friction there because, hey, at the end of the day, uh, they need each other to succeed. Uh, but uh, the good news is I don't think he's going to miss a lot of time. The bad news is this kind of comes at a crappy time because something we've talked about, Chase, is, okay, how will this group really play against increased competition? Well, they played their best game of the year, KP and Luka together, when they hammered uh, Denver at home. I say hammered, about a 10-point win, but against an impressive Nuggets team. Now you're like, okay, how could this team do against Phoenix, the Clippers? Well, Luka gets hurt, of course, but uh, hopefully he's not going to miss too much time. Uh, four of those five games on the schedule coming up are uh, pretty darn difficult, uh, and even Cleveland's playing pretty well this year. Yeah, no question. I mean, the Suns are very good, hottest team in the NBA. Paul George, sneaky MVP candidate, no doubt. And He's been Luke is the out. Clippers' daddy. So. <laughs> exactly so right. If, uh, Luke always plays play. well against the, yeah. the Clippers. Wizards, number one seed in the Eastern hey. Conference. And the Cleveland Cavaliers, they've been one of the more surprised teams in the NBA this year. Yeah, and I mean, uh, when the schedule came out, you were probably thinking Wizards and Cavs at home. Those are, you know, as close to surefire wins as you can get in the NBA. Not anymore. I mean, yeah. those, are, those are not teams you can sleep on if you are the Dallas Mavericks. When will Luka return for the Mavs? Will it be during one of those five games? Pro not Friday night, like we're reporting. Uh, he is doubtful, but... Uh, could he return uh, before the end of this road trip? Let us know uh, down in the comments on that one. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. It's youtube.com slash Mavs TV. Myself, Chase, the Chat Sports team will keep you guys up to date with the latest Mavs news. Rumors will continue to update you guys on this Luka Doncic injury situation. Uh, so keep it locked in here, youtube.com slash Mavs TV. One other thing I wanted to talk about here, Chase, Frank Nilakina's emergence, re-emergence, whatever you want to call it, as we've seen him flash at times in his career, but not really pan out with the New York Knicks. He's played his way into this rotation. Chase was three for three from the three-point line last night, had 13 points off the bench in just 18 minutes. A big reason why uh, Dallas was able to really control that game against Phoenix for quite a while. And you kind of look at what Nilakina's doing here in only 14 minutes per game. He's shooting 42% from three. The shot looks comfortable. We know what he brings to the table defensively. If you if you put up the per 36 uh, minute stats there, which is a common, you know, kind of um, metric. metric in the NBA, you're talking – you know, 12, 13 points per game on 42% from the three. Now, more volume would probably lower the efficiency, but I think he deserves more than 14 minutes per game at this point. I mean, he is bringing some real juice to this lineup, and not just from an energy standpoint. He's knocking down shots, something he never did consistently with the New York Knicks. What's been the calling card for the Dallas Mavericks? What has been their biggest structural growth as a franchise it's been defense yep. and for Frank Nielakina Frankie Smokes what's his, what's been his calling card throughout his career defense. defense he's one of the best on ball defenders across the entire NBA he can guard multiple positions at a very elite level but while he's a great defender the gap in his game has always been offensively it's been shooting it's been the lack of consistency if he's able to make strides in that department nobody has ever denied Frank Nielakina's talent he has it he just needs to be a better offensive player. Didn't get to showcase that in the Olympic Games and hasn't been able to really string together positive offensive performances throughout his NBA career. So if he starts to knock down some threes, stretch the floor, and give you that elite brand of defense, he can continue to be in this rotation. So we'll ask you guys, should Nilakina play more? Type Y for yes, type in for no. I think with Luka out, it's a perfect opportunity for Dallas to work him in 20, 22 minutes a game and see what he gives you. And then if he's playing well, once Luka's back, uh, then you got more options, more flexibility. I think uh, Jason Kidd should flirt with this idea. Let us know what you guys think down below.